vamos a contar a continuación una, una experiencia distinta, en este caso una experiencia eminentemente docente. Lo vamos a hacer Samir Jounes, que es profesor de la Universidad de Notre Dame, y yo, que bueno, para los que no sepáis, pues soy profesor de la, de la Universidad de Alfonso X. Se trata de una experiencia que bueno, fue posible, como todo esto que, que estamos organizando ahora, pues, gracias a la Richard H. House Charitable League Trust y a la Universidad de Notre Dame. La, la idea surge de cómo hacer, puesto que aquí no existe en España ninguna escuela universitaria, ni en ningún, eh, ninguna institución que promueva la enseñanza de este tipo de, de forma de trabajar, cómo hacer para conseguir que los alumnos de aquí, de, de esta escuela o de cualquier universidad, pues tuvieran acceso a este tipo de, de enseñanza. Partiendo de esa base, decidimos hacer un, un taller conjunto en el cual pues, Samir, y, Samir y yo pues, eh, dirigimos un grupo de, de gente en el cual pues, nos ayudaron dos magníficos antiguos alumnos de, de la Universidad de Notre Dame que dibujaban de una manera maravillosa, nos dejaron a todos impresionados y también eh, bueno, Alejandra Gutze y Mark Schalter y dos eh, antiguos compañeros míos de máster que son también gente muy, muy enamorada de, de las tradiciones arquitectónicas españolas, que son Javier Domingo y Carmen Bueno, y con un grupo de, de gente que se apuntó proveniente de distintas universidades, de distintas escuelas, de las cuales hay aquí algunos presentes, está aquí Ricardo, está aquí Estivali, Elena, ¿no? tenemos aquí a, a varios representantes. Eh, es una lista muy larga, no voy a leer ahora a todos los participantes, pero eh, a todos ellos también les quiero dar las gracias porque todos ellos disfrutaron muchísimo de esta experiencia, fue una experiencia muy bonita en la que todos aprendimos mucho. Este proyecto eh, parte de, de la base de... de un eh, lugar en el cual había ya una polémica existente. ¿Por qué elegir este lugar? Pues muy sencillo, ¿no? Por crear una mayor atención hacia este proyecto. Como sabéis, supongo que, que sobre todo los españoles sí lo sabéis, o por lo menos los que sois de Madrid lo sabéis, ha habido mucha polémica en torno a, a lo que está aprobado para la Plaza de la Cebada. En la Plaza de la Cebada, eh, durante los últimos años, pues hemos vivido una serie de conflictos políticos sobre este proyecto, sobre cómo se va eh, a resolver un problema que en realidad lleva muchos años sin resolverse. Se le han intentado dar muchas soluciones y ninguna de ellas ha terminado de funcionar. La verdad es que la propuesta que ahora está planteada, eh, entiendo que para la mayoría de, de los presentes también será así, pues nos parece una, una propuesta que va a agravar aún más esa situación que se viene formando durante mucho tiempo. Lo que ahora mismo está aprobado allí, que ahora os enseñaré alguna imagen, es un gran centro comercial que ocupará la práctica totalidad del espacio de la plaza en una, en una proporción incluso mayor que el edificio actual que ya está completamente fuera de escala y que ya eh, anula el sentido de plaza. La plaza está ahí puesto entre comillas por alguna razón. Realmente si vais a la plaza de la cebada encontráis de todo menos una plaza. Eh, la plaza de la cebada sin embargo históricamente ha sido un espacio muy dinámico donde muchas cosas eh, tenían lugar, eh, surge, bueno, como muchos sabréis, surge en las afueras de la ciudad en un momento dado como un espacio de comercio, como su nombre indica, pues relacionado con, con la cebada. En este espacio, pues siempre fue un espacio con mucha vitalidad. Como veis en estas imágenes, ya habló ayer Rafael de esta, de esta fuente que aparece en estas imágenes. ¿no? Y es que, pues, ahí hay ya un mercado en esa, en esa representación. Como lo veis ahí también en la imagen superior, o lo veis abajo ya convertido en arquitectura. Ya veis un mercado cubierto, un mercado cubierto que como también mencionaba ya Rafael, empezaba a tener una escala mmm, tan desproporcionada con respecto a la plaza que la plaza quedaba anulada por él. Este mercado pues en un momento dado se consideró eh, obsoleto y se construyó un nuevo mercado que es este que veis aquí, con estas seis grandes cúpulas que ocupaba gran parte de la plaza y que tiene una relación muy torpe con ella, porque está a un nivel diferente de la plaza, tiene dos grandes accesos que tienen esta longitud para los garajes que ocupan completamente los espacios que rodean a ese, a ese lugar. Y aquí no sé si sabéis, pero hasta hace poco se, se encontraba otro edificio, que era una piscina pública, que fue demolida 
y en su lugar, en el solar que ocupaba esa piscina, ahora se desarrollan muchísimas actividades por parte de colectivos del barrio y en cierta manera, pese a ser simplemente un agujero dentro del tejido urbano, ha recuperado bastante la actividad, simplemente por ser un espacio abierto, porque es que realmente este barrio necesita esa plaza. Pensad que la escala de este lugar, bueno, ahí veis este espacio del que estaba hablando, el que ha resultado de la demolición de esa piscina, pensad que la escala de este lugar es una escala inmensa, si, si compararéis esa plaza con la plaza mayor, la plaza mayor cabe dentro de la plaza de la cebada. Bueno, si la ponéis en la misma escala, cabe dentro de la, para que os hagáis un poco la idea de hasta qué punto este espacio está desaprovechado en la actualidad. Bueno, este es el proyecto que está aprobado, ha habido mucha polémica porque este proyecto incluía dentro de él incluso más espacio público que el anterior y había que dejar, eh, por normativa municipal, había que dejar unas reservas de espacio público. Ese espacio público, finalmente y tras muchos conflictos políticos, se va a ceder en las afueras de la ciudad. Se va a construir un parque del de número de metros cuadrados que este edificio va a retirar de espacio público en este barrio. Esa ha sido la solución que ya veis vosotros, bueno, cada uno que juzgue por su cuenta, pero como no es una solución muy lógica ¿no? para un problema urbano. Eh, ¿Cuál es la justificación de este proyecto? Pues que la plaza se lleva a la cubierta. Como veis aquí, esto es una cubierta verde y supuestamente esa cubierta funcionaría como plaza. También creo que cualquiera sabe que una cubierta no va a funcionar como plaza. Bueno, aquí veis imágenes del proyecto, pues como invade completamente el espacio público de lo que es hoy en la plaza, y ahí veis esa idealización de esa cubierta plaza, que realmente rara vez llegaría a tener ese aspecto. Bueno, aquí veis lo que os comentaba, ¿no? la escala de, de este espacio, y cómo, si, cómo realmente los metros cuadrados que deja la plaza mayor son perfectamente asimilables a lo que, a lo que tenemos en ese espacio. Con lo cual, eh, desde el primer momento, partiendo de esa, de, esa, de esa dimensión y partiendo también de la forma irregular que tiene este espacio, que no es sencillo de resolver, pero al mismo tiempo tiene la virtud de darte muchas guías sobre cómo resolverlo. Pues partiendo de esa base, el profesor Samuel Yunes desarrolló una serie de bocetos sobre cómo podríamos resolver el, este, este, este espacio. Estos bocetos nos sirvieron de base de trabajo y sobre ellos trabajamos durante, durante todo el taller y eh, desde el comienzo, desde esa primera idea inicial de, de Samuel Yunes, la, la solución que se, propuso, se planteaba era resolver esta difícil geometría por medio de dos pequeñas plazas. Algo perfectamente factible como, como veréis ahora. Bueno, os dejo con, con el profesor Samuel Yunes que pasará a explicaros la, la propuesta en sí. Thank you. As Alejandro uh, very, very rightly uh, suggested to you, uh, that one of the first things that one notices regarding uh, the Plaza de la Ciudad is that it actually is very large, that the entire Plaza Mayor can actually fit into it. But it has a very peculiar geometry, in particular, as you can see here with this condition here and this condition, while I'm trying to, it's not moving, that is there as well. Very con uh, strange conditions, but from that, from the existing contingencies of the site, one can pr uh, actually uh, uh, produce a very interesting proposal that actually does uh, restitute the idea of a square or several squares within a city. Very importantly, I wanted to very briefly underline the fact that urban spaces also can and should be seen perhaps in the city as in a series of sequences, in particular the sequence from Plaza Mayor down to Calle de Toledo, all the way to Plaza Cebada, as well as the relationship between the Church of San Francisco, the Church of San Andres, as well as other parts within the quarter of Latina. So in the first of all, then, is the insertion of this plaza within the urban context and the ways in which one can actually design it. One of our first uh, uh, um, intentions was to essentially really follow the existing context in the sense of actually uh, delimiting street context as well as uh, completing urban spaces that actually stand at present in a state of incompletion. For example, the Church of Sant Andres uh, stands in a rather undefined space. So I should say perhaps that it's defined on three sides but not the fourth. So actually we completed urban spaces uh, as one of the initial uh, intentions of the project. 
But also, rather than proposing one single building, as Alejandro just explained, it is possible to actually produce 13 buildings, 13 to 15, which actually can accommodate very much the same requirements uh, by having, first on a ground level, a complete uh, dedication toward commercial activities. So everything on a ground level is dedicated to commerce, to, to, to shops, and so on. And everything above that, that is the second, third, to the fourth floors, are dedicated to more private uses, sometimes offices and sometimes uh, um, and sometimes uh, apartments. Uh, there are a couple of public buildings that we've introduced. One of them actually is this, this, this market, a covered market hall, which serves in a sense to delimit as a set piece the two urban spaces that we've actually provided. There's a gallery as well as a new entrance to the metro station, which actually pre-exists there. Incidentally, the wonderful gate that used to be in Latina that outside your school exists there has been, in this particular case, reappropriated. We propose to bring it back and then introduce it in this particular location, right here, as one of the entrances to the metro as well. Currently, the site has parking ramps, one here and one there. We've incorporated all of those, except these particular parking ramps are now uh, uh, included within the buildings themselves. And in order to restitute the idea of a piazza or plaza uh, in, in, in both cases. Uh, very briefly, some of these buildings are all dedicated to commerce, uh, a large department store buildings, and the rest are all dedicated to private uses. Oh, how do you make that? Sorry. And here's the plan in, in, in greater detail. And here's the big. Uh, volumetric uh, 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 treatment that actually explains what we just talked about. As you can see, scale-wise, the, the buildings do uh, fit the urban context. In fact, they take directly their inspiration from the urban context. And many, uh, a few members of the group actually worked on analyzing existing uh, uh, conditions, architectural conditions, and existing uh, architectural uh, treatment, uh, architectural details. And all of this was brought together by the group in a matter of about three or four days to produce a series of, uh, uh, of proposals. One more time, very quickly, uh, here are the two public buildings the entrance to the metro that is right there, a civic tower that actually relates to the Calle de Toledo, and actually, therefore, the relationship coming down from Plaza Mayor, uh, the covered market hall that actually uh, provides uh, at least part of the definition for two squares, while remaining quite transparent on a ground level, a new department store, as well as new uh, uh, apartment buildings. This is the view, standing right here, and looking directly at, as you can see, the reconstruction of that gate that you've got there, which now has been slightly elevated a bit more to give it more of a taller proportion, but actually becomes one of the entrances to the metro condition. Views of the streets now leading up to, this is how it actually the idea is of, of, of integrating our architecture with the existing neighborhood. As you can see, it's a very much the same scale, three to four levels. One of the views of actually entering or looking toward uh, uh, what we actually will call Plaza de la Ceballos, that actually it is, a, a, in this case, a plaza. And this is it in comparison roughly to the same angle uh, uh, that Alejandro just, just mentioned a bit earlier. This is a view from the, from the, from the square directly. As you can see, it's quite uh, transparent with respect to the other square, and you see the civic tower. And we've reconstructed the fountain that, uh, that uh, uh, Rafael mentioned a few times already over the past uh, couple of days. Another fountain. Another fountain. And here's a view actually looking at, uh, this is the Church of Sant Andres. These are the new buildings actually put to in order to enclose the square that, uh, as I said, was partially enclosed. And this is a view of the entire inclusion, the entire integration of this, uh, uh, this project within the quarter of Latina. And there are the two, two projects, the one currently being considered by the city and the one that we propose as a counter project to that, uh, to, to that one. And at the end, these are just examples of some of the plays that were produced by some of the students. In particular, this one was done by Javier de Domingo. Is Javier here today? No. no, he's not. Uh, but to show, to show you, in other words, the idea of actually understanding the quarter, all the architectural details, the urban details, and so forth, as part of what in Italian is called an abaco, in other words, a kind of lexicon of existing architectural uh, 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 conditions. Now, that was the project we did for Plaza de la Cibada in Madrid. I'll show you very briefly the project for Piazza Maggiore in Palermo. 
And as you can see, and as uh, Alejandro mentioned earlier, the word piazza is actually put between brackets because it is not a piazza, although it's a very, very large space. Uh, I'll show you very briefly a, a picture of where the site is going to be to, to the right, to my right, uh, a picture of the conditions of the site in, an, in the 18th century. And here is that particular site as well. As you can see, it's made of about nine or 10 urban blocks. For those of you who may or may not be familiar with, with Palermo, let me tell you very briefly where it is. This is the famous Piazza Marina. So therefore, the waterfront is somewhere right here. And this is the area that we're going to be working on. This is actually a picture taken from shortly before the Second World War, that is before the Allied invasion, because the Allied invasion essentially took away most of this area. It was almost completely destroyed. As you can see, parts of the walls, the Spanish walls of the city still exist. And you can see them right here. And they do inform the urban fabric uh, uh, quite significantly. The area is called Magione because of this church. This uh, 14th century church is called La Magione, and therefore that's why it's called Piazza della Magione. We will reintegrate this church within, within the neighborhood, in a sense, in a manner that we actually did in, uh, in, in Madrid earlier. These are the existing conditions. So uh, all of these areas actually have been, all of this has been bombed in the Second World War and has remained such for a very long time. In fact, many parts of the city up until fairly recently, up until the past 15, 20 years, had remained in a state of ruination precisely because of the bombing in the Second World War. Uh, the, what you see here are, is the tracing, as it were, of the old city fabric. But these actually are plan ruins, uh, simply a couple of feet away, uh, uh, um, re released from the earth, not, not, that, not that far. Here's where. It, where it stands at present. And the only thing that exists is actually part of a church complex right here, also known as the Sapienza. And that's the only building or set of buildings that are still uh, remaining. What we have actually, therefore, done is to reintegrate all of that within the existing uh, uh, neighborhood. These are the existing conditions to the left and the proposal to the right. And I'll show you that in just a little bit. Again, this is the Cala. This is Piazza Marina. This is uh, Via Maqueda, named after the, the Spanish uh, Viceroy. And then this is Corso Vittorio Emanuele. So this is where the area that he actually worked with. This is the famous Villa Giulia, right here. This is Via Lincoln. And so these are actually the limits of our, of our site. This is the urban plan that we actually produce. And as you can see, it seeks to integrate itself uh, within a the city. Therefore, the idea of the completion of the city became one leading uh, aspect of, of our approach. It's a present existing small church here called Santeuno. And we actually incorporated into a sort of a set of urban sequences that actually would lead from the church into a more important and impenant uh, piazza. In this case, however, it is a piazza incorporating an existing church of La Sapienza, giving it a new facade, and then leading all the way up to the apse of the church of the Magione that I showed you earlier. So essentially, you have a series of urban spaces that connect one and two piazze, a new school, a new uh, integration of the, 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 the Church of the Magione within an urban, within an urban uh, uh, context. And there's another uh, urban uh, sequence we've worked with, this one, going all the way here to a new market that integrates within the urban uh, uh, context. All of this right now uh, stands as empty space. And here's the aerial uh, view. What you see in light, what is drawn in light, are the existing conditions. What is drawn in more and darker uh, 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 pencil work are the new buildings. And this, what I briefly will do is show you the sequences actually beginning with Santeuno to the major piazza here, the Sapienza, all the way to the Church of the Magione, and the other sequence that does the following uh, uh, path. Here it is in greater detail. And here are the two major sequences. I'd like to really address this to the students because uh, to ask you to be, please consider your interventions in cities as part of a larger context. Therefore, think about the urban sequences uh, into which you actually uh, uh, add your own interventions. And here are the views, the Church of the Magione, the Church of the Sapienza, which we added a bit later. This is a new facade that it has. All of these are the newer buildings. This is the, the, the piazza of the Sapienza. To the right is the, new, the, the church, the existing church, plus a new facade that we have actually proposed, that leading up through the street right here to the very end of the apse of the church of the Magione. 
And here it is, you enter to the left here in this new uh, uh, enclosure that leads up to the church of the Macione. A view up to the new market hall, which has apartments above it, and here's the market hall, and opens onto a new piazza made of uh, pre-existing buildings as well as new proposals. This is the second part of the sequence that actually takes you through a set, uh, a set of streets all the way up to a new piazza that we've created at the end, and this is the one leading to it. So in a sense, these are all small plates that actually were done in a project uh, that lasted for about three weeks or so that included uh, first analyzing existing contexts, understanding them. And finally, I'd like to add the following thing. I've heard, we've heard a lot, especially in, in Spain, about the preservation of uh, the remarkable architectural heritage that this country is made of, and that's also very important. But if we are to be building new cities, uh, of course, they have to be not only restored and restituted, but one has to continue traditions, because otherwise, if traditions aren't continued, well, then they are put in a museum. And one way to essentially kill a tradition is to indeed put it in a museum. So, uh, therefore, restituting uh, a particular tradition is actually by practicing it. And in this case, the buildings can be integrated with any aspects of modern life. Thank you. Thank you. This, this, project, well, this project was developed by, by a group of students of, from Notre Dame with uh, Professor Samuel Younes and also Professor uh, Ettore Machola. And as, as you may see also here, this is a powerful tool to, to operate in every city you have to work in. Um, one, one more thing I, I would like to say is to thank uh, Samir Younes for the many things he taught us during this uh, workshop. I'm very thankful to him and to Notre Dame School. And I um, invite you all to join us for the next workshop. I'm, I'm sure we, we, we will be able to organize one more. Thank you. Thank you.